One of them a German spy reporting every move to von Sherbach, the commandant. One of them a hunted fugitive. Hi, well, folks, and welcome back to The Storm and Cellar. Today, I'd like to share with you my top 10 war movies. Now, these movies I've watched over and over again for years. Perhaps or some are black and white and didn't have the blood and gore or special effects that some later movies had, but the story, content, and acting was awesome. So let's take a look at my number 10 movie, Sergeant York. I'm calm left. The rest of you keep under cover. Come back here. Where are you going? You didn't give me command. This is a true story of one of my fellow Tennesseans who won the Medal of Honor for his uh, heroics during the Argonne Offensive in France during World War I. He was awarded the medal for single-handedly killing 25 enemy soldiers and capturing 132 others. However, the real story was that uh, due to his Christian faith, he was initially a conscientious objector. Hmm. Okay, my number nine movie is We Were Soldiers. Put on the field. And I'll be the last to step off, but we will all come home together. This is a true story of Lieutenant Colonel Hal Moore and the Battle of Yip Drang in Vietnam. It was the first major battle between the U.S. Army and North of Vietnamese Army. Moore, who was later promoted to lieutenant general, was the epitome of leading from the front and caring for his troopers. In this epic battle, Moore promised to be the first onto the battlefield and the last off, and he kept his promise. Now my number eight is Saving Private Ryan. We're looking for a private James Ryan. I don't know anything about Ryan. I don't care. Finding him so he can go home. If that earns me the right to get back to my wife, well then, that's my mission. Many historians have said that the battle scenes throughout the movie, but especially the taking of the beach scene, is as realistic as it gets. The story is about a patrol who's ordered from the top to rescue a private Ryan who lost all of his brothers in combat and making him the last surviving son. Man, this one tears at your heart all the way through. Which brings me to my number seven, 12 o'clock high. Stop making plans, forget about going home. Consider yourself already dead. Once you accept that idea, it won't be so rough. On your toes high squadron, low squadron, here they come, 12 o'clock high. Watch it come, they're heading for the high squadron. This movie was a fictitious movie, but based on a real life Colonel Frank Armstrong who was sent down to the group to correct the morale and discipline. Uh, the movie greatly depicts what it's like to fly the B-17 in, into combat and how the mental strain affected so many air crewmen, especially leadership of sending crews up day to, after day and experiencing horrific losses. So my number six movie is The Bridge Over the River Kwai. These prisoners have been chosen to build a bridge across the river Kwai. If you work hard, you will be treated well. But if you do not work hard, you will be punished. Although the movie and characters are fictitious, it's based on a bridge built over a river supporting the Japanese Burma Siam Railway. During the construction and under brutal Japanese soldiers, British, Dutch, and American prisoners of war were used as slave labor. 13,000 POWs died during the construction and was buried along the railway line. Also, over 90,000 civilians died as well during the railway's construction. All right, my number five movie of all time, The Dirty Dozen. You are ordered by Allied Command to select 12 general prisoners. 
convicted by courts martial and sentenced to be executed or serve lengthy prison terms for murder, rape, robbery, and other crimes of violence. And you will deliver them secretly behind enemy lines in France to undertake a mission of sabotage that could change the course of the war. The Dirty Dozen uh, is an awesome movie about 12 selected convicts to carry out a suicide mission behind enemy lines. The target was a hotel where German generals stayed, and the Dirty Dozen's mission was to kill as many as possible. There were reports that such an outfit did exist during World War II, but it was never confirmed. There was, however, a commando group called the Filthy 13, which was a demolition airborne unit. They were known for being tough, hard drinking, and in and out of the brig a lot. That brings me to my number four movie, The Memphis Bell. Look out, look out! Take out the rookies. Smile? What is there to smile about, sir? You guys have finished 24 missions. One more and you get to go home. That sure make me smile. Target for today is Bremen. The Memphis Bell was a B-17F and was one of the first B-17s to complete the required 25 missions in Europe during World War II before it was being sent home. The B-17 was returned to the U.S. on 8 June 1943, and it was in Memphis uh, down by the river for a long time. The crew came home to sell war bonds for the rest of the war. Uh, the story, however, is another great movie that shows the heroism, tragedy, and success of the American warfighter. Now, coming down to the home stretch, my number three movie is Stalag 17. I think everything was roses. It wasn't. Stalag 17 was a hellhole where no man ever escaped alive. One of us is a stoolie, a dirty, stinking stoolie. One of them a German spy reporting every move to von Scherbach, the commandant. One of them a hunted fugitive as the Nazis turned Stalag 17 inside out and upside down to find him. In Nazi Germany, there were over 40,000 American prisoners of war. Stalag 13 was a representative of that number with 630 American sergeants in the Stalag here. The plot is a captured bomber pilot, Lieutenant Dunbar, who was accused of sabotage and soon to be picked up by the Gestapo. Uh, the plan is to get him out of Stalag 13, but the only problem is there's a German plant in the camp. This brings me to another great POW movie. My number two, The Great Escape. We dig. How many are you taking out? 250. 250? The classic film The Great Escape was mostly fictional. However, it was based on an actual escape from Stalag Lu 3 in Zagon, Poland. Uh, the movie is well done and shows the British ingenuity in the planned escape. Uh, there were 1,800 officer POWs in the camp. 250 were to escape, but only 76 got out of the camp. Sadly, 50 were caught and executed by the Gestapo. 23 were returned to the camp, and three made it to freedom. Now, drum roll, please. My number one movie of all time is Patton. They followed my plan. I'd be there by now. I'd cut off the retreat of every damn German and on this island. I didn't pick you. Carl Molden as General Bradley. Ike picked you. You're one of the best field commanders I've got, but you don't know when to shut up, George. You're a pain in the neck. Sicily. France. The Battle of the Bulge. I will be proud to lead you wonderful guys into battle anytime, anywhere. Patton won seven Academy Awards to include Best Picture and Actor. The movie follows General George S. Patton from his victory at Kasserine Pass in Africa against Field Marshal Rommel to the landing of Sicily, where he raced British General Montgomery to Messina. Finally, after being fired for slapping actually two soldiers for cowardice, 
He was fired and sent to England as a decoy, where Eisenhower built a fake army around him as a ruse to throw off the Germans to an actual invasion of Normandy. He was later hired uh, to lead Third Army under General Bradley and rolls across Germany to victory after victory. This was a fantastic movie uh, on Patton's leadership style and historical accuracy of the film. Okay, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention three of my honorable mention movies. Lawrence of Arabia, The Longest Day, and 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. So be sure and check all of those movies out as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed my top 10 movies. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends to help the channel grow. Let me know what you think about uh, your best war movies by leaving your comments in the section below. So until next time, make sure all your takeoff and landings equal.